Inside the Magic Show number 482 for June 29th, 2014. It is Sunday, June 29th, 2014. This is show 482 of Inside the Magic. And as always, I am your host, Ricky Briganti, with another great show packed with a whole lot of Disney news. Got to catch up on a couple of weeks of news here after last week's Harry Potter madness and plenty more fun. Before we get to all of that, I invite you to visit our website at InsideTheMagic.net. There you'll find all of our podcasts, videos, photos, news, articles, and plenty more. And if you ever have anything you'd like to send in, news, tips, questions, comments, or whatever, you can email me at ricky at insidethemagic.net or you can call leave a message at 407-494-4ITM that's 4486 and now let's get on with the show This week's episode of Inside the Magic is brought to you by Magical Travel. Book your summer Disney cruise with Magical Travel and receive a shipboard credit to use while you're on your vacation. But you're going to want to book now for the best availability and pricing since we are already in the middle of summer by calling Magical Travel today at 866-207-8387 or visit them online at MagicalTravel.com to receive a free price quote. And be sure to mention Inside the Magic when you do that to receive a free Disney gift card for qualifying bookings when you book your Disney vacation with Magical Travel. And of course, thanks very much to all contributors to Inside the Magic, whether you head over to the website, make a one-time donation, or sign up for a recurring donation, or simply click uh, through the uh, Amazon or any other affiliate link there. It all supports this show, and I thank you much for every little bit of it. And now, let's get started with a trip around the world. Well, last week, obviously, was a show devoted completely to Diagon Alley, the Wizarding World of Harry Potter expansion over at Universal Studios Florida, which is uh, opening very, very soon. Hopefully, you enjoyed the discussion with uh, Andrew Sims from MuggleCast and Hypable. It was great to have him on the show. I had a lot of fun talking about all of that. But this week, we're going to be moving past that as we await the July 8th officially uh, official opening date for that. Can't wait to get back in there and explore some more. But uh, back to to Disney news this week and starting off with uh, what a lot of people are basically calling Disney's answer to the Diagon Alley hype. What could possibly be the biggest thing that Disney could respond with immediately this summer? Yeah, it's frozen. Disney has announced uh, beginning July 5th, continuing through September 1st over at Disney's Hollywood Studios will be a special daily event called Frozen Summer Fun Live. And it includes quite a lot of entertainment based on the hit, uh, smash hit, phenomenon of a hit, uh, Disney film, uh, animated film Frozen. Uh, Let me run through the various offerings that will take place at Disney's Hollywood Studios. It all begins with Anna and Elsa's Royal Welcome each day at 11 a.m. Anna and Elsa will come into the park on a horse-drawn sleigh in a royal procession down Hollywood Boulevard. Kristoff will be there. First time we're going to see him. Uh, in the park, as well as um, a whole lot of other uh, characters, including skaters, skiers, ice cutters. Uh, so they'll be there to sort of hey, say, hey, this is the beginning of a frozen day at Disney's Hollywood Studios. Then uh, throughout the day, uh, Olaf will be there not to meet and greet with, uh, but rather just sort of popping in uh, for appearances. Uh, he'll be on screens at times. He will, you'll hear his voice throughout the park at times. Uh, so little hints of Olaf here and there. Of course, summer is what he looks mo- forward to most. Uh, so there'll be little hints of Olaf in there. There's going to be a stage show, 20 minutes long, presented multiple times each day, called For the First Time in Forever, A Frozen Sing-Along Celebration. Now, to me, this stage show sounds a lot like what uh, Disney has been performing in the Fantasy Fair uh, area, the theater out at Disneyland, sort of a comedic retelling of the tale of Frozen, including songs and uh, projections and lighting and special effects. It's going to be in the park's premiere theater. Both Anna and Elsa will be part of this show, along with the Royal Historians of Arendelle, uh, a comedic retelling of the story. So that should be quite a uh, fun show for Frozen fans. Inside Soundstage 1. 
There's going to be Wandering Oaken's Trading Post and Frozen Funland. Uh, they're calling it a big summer blowout, of course. And uh, it is going to have a Frozen Funland filled with uh, uh, the ability to go ice skating or watch skating demonstrations. There will be ice carving. There will be, of course, merchandise and food and drinks to buy. And then on the way out, you'll see a door marked Sauna. And that's going to lead you outside into the Florida sun. So that's that's pretty amusing there. Uh, turning to the evening of the, each of these frozen days, there will be the coolest summer ever dance party, as Disney's calling it, from 5.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m., where a live band, probably a variation of Mulch, Sweat, and Shears, will be taking the stage to play a lot of contemporary songs and then a few uh, familiar songs from the Frozen film as well. And then it all caps off at the end of each day at 9.45 p.m. when uh, all the characters come together, Anna, Elsa, Kristoff, Olaf, uh, at the Sorcerer's Hat stage for a grand finale, including a fireworks display that apparently is going to have uh, Elsa sort of conducting the fireworks in some form. So very interesting. All of this has uh, come together very quickly. Uh, uh, the announcement was just made, and it's starting uh, not too long from now, about a week from now, July 5th. And uh, it sounds pretty exciting for all Frozen fans. I will certainly be there to cover all of it. You're going to want to stay tuned to InsideTheMagic.net as well as our YouTube channel. Certainly, I'll be videoing a whole lot of all this entertainment. Next week on the show is actually going to be our big half ear in review. So you're not going to hear any of this Frozen fun on the podcast next week. But if you want it right away, check the website, check our YouTube channel. You'll find it there. And then wait till the following week here on the podcast for a uh, report from that. Uh, here's a few odds and ends about the Frozen fun at Disney's Hollywood Studios, uh, you will not be meeting and greeting with characters. Anna and Elsa are still doing that over at Princess Fairy Tale Hall at the Magic Kingdom, not at Hollywood Studios. Uh, Olaf will not be making any sort of character appearance there, and there will be no Fast Pass Plus availability for any of this uh, Frozen stuff. So it's basically just show up and enjoy a whole lot of presentations and shows and interactive experiences and that sort of thing. Uh, and it all starts just three days before uh, Diagon Alley officially opens. I'm sure that timing is by no accident. But uh, yeah, other than the fact that I will probably have to listen to the song Let It Go at least 700 times throughout that day, I am kind of looking forward to seeing what Disney is uh, cranking out for all of this uh, Frozen stuff. Speaking of interactive experiences, let's jump coasts over to Disneyland, where not too long after that, beginning July 9th, a new interactive experience will be debuting throughout Frontierland, including entertainment, merchandise, food, and uh, opportunities to really become part of the story. Disneyland is calling it Legends of Frontierland Gold Rush. And it's uh, not entirely clear as to exactly how all of this is going to work, but uh, guests will develop their own characters to uh, embody in Frontierland, and then you uh, sort of take that character on. And, and use it as part of the, your own personalized tale, as Disney says. Here's kind of the official description from Disney. Frontierland and its neighbor Rainbow Ridge are in the midst of a good old-fashioned land feud. Rainbow Ridge, a once-booming mining town, has dried up, and they, they have their eyes set on Frontierland. The steady, hard-working folk in Frontierland want to keep the town safe and free of rough-around-the-edges opportunistic types. Rumors are spreading that gold has been discovered in the mines belonging to Frontierland, and there's even a rumor that Frontierland itself sits on the mother load. Whether or not the rumors are true, the folk in Rainbow Ridge have one thing on their minds, take over Frontierland. Thus, the struggle begins. So guests are going to be uh, asked to uh, basically decide with one or the other. Are you with Rainbow Ridge or are you with Frontierland? And take it from there. Should be... Uh, pretty interesting to see how all of that plays out. Also news from Disneyland, a little bit of a Club 33 update for that exclusive club in New Orleans Square that's been under uh, sort of re a refurbishment, a rehab for the last, oh gosh, six months or so. Um, a lot of New Orleans Square has been under scaffolding and coverings because of it. Well, it's uh, reopening very soon. July 18th is the date that I hear that Club 33 will reopen in a much more restricted fashion than ever before. Uh, members will have to be present for every single reservation, at least at first, with extremely limited availability for non-member guests to join them. In addition, I've learned that uh, Chef Andrew Sutton of Napa Rose and Carthay Circle fame is now the executive chef for Club 33 as well, which is fantastic news because the food at those two restaurants is phenomenal. Uh, this should be a uh, dramatic improvement of the food in Club 33 as well. So uh, pretty exciting for those who get to go into Club 33, though it will be rather difficult to uh, make that happen at first. 
Now, I couldn't let this week go by completely without uh, adding a little bit more to the Diagon Alley discussion from Universal Orlando, uh, because this weekend, vacation package guests are arriving to the Universal Orlando Resort, uh, basically today, with uh, scheduled times to go into Diagon Alley as a preview beginning tomorrow, June the 30th, and then throughout uh, the coming days leading up to the grand opening uh, as uh, you know the perk for signing up for one of these uh, special vacation packages. It's not clear if uh, there will be any soft openings for anybody outside of that world, anybody who's just showing up to the park as a day guest. It seems likely that it'll happen at some point. Not today, most likely, um, but it could be any time in the coming days. It's not something that Universal Orlando will announce, so it's just one of those things you got to kind of watch Twitter and, you know, lurk in the park and whatever and you might get lucky and get in there, but July 8th is officially the date that you'll be able to go to Diagon Alley. Uh, in the meantime, of course, you can visit uh, InsideTheMagic.net and check our YouTube channel for, I think I have something like four hours hours of video from within there and many many articles and lots of photos and even one that i just posted a few days ago a sort of retrospective look at what used to be in that spot the old classic jaws ride it, you know was exactly where diagon alley is now in fact i uh, overlaid an old satellite photo with a newer one and you can see how exactly matching the footprint of jaws and the lagoon there matches where diagon alley is now i also talked with uh, mike aiello who is now the director of entertainment for universal orlando but back then, back years and years ago, one of his very first jobs, if not his first job at Universal, was as a Jaws boat skipper captain. Um, so he kind of reminisced on that and, and, and told me a few things about uh, walking through Diagon Alley and remembering back to the days of Jaws there, as well as I uh, learned some some sort of Jaws tributes that are littered throughout Diagon Alley. So you go over to the website and check for that as well. One more Diagon Alley note here before moving on. Uh, if you do want to see even more from that area, NBC is going to be airing a special uh, on television hosted by Meredith Vieira tomorrow night, June 30th at 8 p.m. 7 Central, a uh, behind-the-scenes look for one hour at Diagon Alley. So definitely set your DVRs for that. Now over at uh, SeaWorld Orlando, recently a new Shamu show has debuted. It's called Light Up the Night, featuring original music, uh, lighting, a big fireworks finale. If you want to see some highlights of that, head over to our website as well. Back out to California, Universal Studios Hollywood recently held a special event uh, celebrating Transformers. It was their very first Transformers fan experience held in conjunction with BotCon that was uh, uh, going on that weekend, last weekend in Pasadena. As part of this Transformers fan experience, it was after hours access to Transformers The Ride 3D. There was a panel discussion with Hasbro, uh, photo opportunities with Optimus Prime, Megatron, and Bumblebee. Props from the movie were there, including the full-size Optimus Prime truck and a uh, concert from uh, musician Stan Bush, who uh, is most known for his contribution to the original animated Transformers movie soundtrack many years ago in the 80s. So uh, you can see highlights of all of that over on our website as well. Coming up in early August is going to be a convention in California called Scare LA. I'm pretty sure I've mentioned it here on the show before, talking about the 45th anniversary Haunted Mansion panel that will be held on August 9th, the actual date that will be the 45th anniversary of the Haunted Mansion. It seems like Disneyland isn't doing much to celebrate that other than releasing some merchandise, so uh, this Scare LA convention is sort of taking it upon themselves to do the same thing. They're going to have uh, DoomBuggies.com owner and creator Jeff Bayham hosting a panel with uh, Imagineer Bob Gurr will be there, and now, recently announced, adding to that panel will be legendary Imagineer Alice Davis, wife of the late, great Mark Davis, who, of course, was incredibly influential uh, in the design of the Haunted Mansion, so that should be pretty exciting. You should definitely check that convention out, if only to see that uh, particular panel, though I will be there the whole weekend, because I am really looking forward to seeing that and all the other Halloween fun. Let's jump out to Disneyland Paris. We're coming up soon, about a week and a half from now or so. On July 10th, the Ratatouille ride in Miniland will officially make its debut at the Walt Disney Studios theme park in uh, Disneyland Paris. And recently there was a press preview to sort of unveil the attraction a, a, you know, a couple of weeks ahead of its official opening, as well as the whole Miniland that includes uh, the Bistro Chez Remy uh, restaurant. And so you can uh, head over to InsideTheMagic.net for uh, full coverage of what what all of that looks like as well. 
And just recently, Disney Consumer Products had a special holiday showcase up in New York, uh, unveiling a lot of their product lines that will be released throughout the rest of the year, certainly living leading into the Christmas season. And uh, a lot of the fun that they were showing off certainly was Frozen-related. Everybody's clamoring for more Frozen merchandise. Among the most popular items, the most highly anticipated items on there are a uh, an Olaf snow cone maker. That's a little bizarre because you're going to get the snow out of Olaf. It's almost like you're eating Olaf, but that's okay. I mean, he just kind of rebuilds himself and, you know, he can get impaled and he's fine and all that. So uh, not too much to worry about there. There's uh, other frozen products or, of course, uh, more dolls, more uh, apparel dresses, you know, little kids uh, costumes and that sort of thing. There's a vanity for girls uh, in which you press a button and Anna and Elsa appear in the mirror. And then uh, there is an item that uh, a lot of people are really, really excited about that is basically Disney's answer to Elf on the Shelf. Uh, you know, that sort of elf you hide around your house and there's this whole story around it. Well, they're taking that concept and applying it to, yeah, who else? Olaf. Uh, so you'll be able to buy this book that comes with a story and a little plush Olaf that comes with it as well and uh, then sort of, you know, hide it around your house and have a fun. It doesn't even have to be a Christmas time thing. You know, the elf certainly applies to Christmas, but uh, this uh, does not necessarily apply specifically to that. There is... Uh plenty of other fun to be had when it comes to Olaf and uh, and Frozen. It is uh, called Do You Want a Hug or uh, 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 yeah, uh, Hug Me Olaf or something like that. So um yeah, you can uh, look forward to that. There's already a pre-order uh, on Amazon. I put I posted it on Facebook. A lot of people already pre-ordered uh, this this Olaf. So very popular item. So if you want to check that out, uh, you know, if you want to go through the Inside the Magic Amazon link, awesome. You don't have to. Either way, seems like it's going to be a hot item this holiday season. And uh, most importantly, you can see a full wrap-up of all of the new products that Disney Consumer Products w- uh, were showing off uh, recently in New York over on our website. In the world of video games, Disney Interactive has announced the first ever Disney Infinity Toy Box Summit that will take place August 15th through 17th at Avalanche Software in Salt Lake City, Utah. The actual software developers, the game developers for uh, Disney Infinity. It's a fan appreciation event in which the top toy box creative artists from around the world will be competing. The uh, best creations will then be uh, a part of the game's fall launch. In addition, there will be mentor tours there, panels and roundtable feedback, a tour of the studio, and for those who can't make it in person, a live streaming web- webcast for everybody else to see. So there's that bunch of fun from the world of video games. Now in uh, comics, the Figment comic from Marvel and Disney seems to uh, be doing very well because the first run sold out completely at the distributor level. In fact, it's pretty hard to get in the stores as well, and they sent it right back to the printers. So uh, that is wonderful news for the Disney Kingdom's line. The first issue of the Figment comic is fantastic, and I can't wait to uh, to see the second one. So uh, definitely go out and get one of those if you haven't already. It is a great comic. Let's jump to the world of movies now, where Disney and Pixar have released the official synopsis and a bit of uh, information about uh, their upcoming film, Inside Out, which is due out June 19th of 2015, next year, from Academy Award winning director Pete Docter. Here is the official description of that film. Growing up can be a bumpy road, and it's no exception for Riley, who is uprooted from her her Midwest life when her father starts a new job in San Francisco. Like all of us, Riley is guided by her emotions. Joy, played by Amy Poehler. Fear, played by Bill Hader. Anger, played by Louis Black. Disgust, played by Mindy Kaling. And Sadness, played by Phyllis Smith. The emotions live in headquarters, the control center inside Riley's mind where they help advise her through everyday life as Riley and her emotions struggle to adjust to a new life in San Francisco. Turmoil ensues in headquarters. Although Joy, Riley's main and most important emotion, tries to keep things positive, the emotions conflict on how best to navigate a new city, house, and school. There is the uh, synopsis of Inside Out. In addition, Disney and Pixar have announced a new animated short will play in front of Inside Out. It is called Lava. Speaking of short films, uh, legendary Disney animator Glenn Keane has released a new hand-drawn animated film that he has created uh, by himself, essentially. Uh, Glenn Keane, of course, was behind um, iconic characters like Ariel, Aladdin, Beast. Uh, Well, now his new short film, Duet 
premiered online recently. You can find it on YouTube and Google something or other where it premiered. And Anyway, it's not hard to find. Just search for Glenn Keane Duet, and it is definitely worth a watch. It's great to see some sort of classic hand-drawn uh, animation being done in a really beautiful fashion. Back to uh, movie news. Uh, casting has been announced a little bit for Disney's upcoming uh, live-action animation hybrid movie for The Jungle Book. Not a lot is known about that so far, although it will be in theaters in 3D October 9th of next year, 2015. Well, Ben Kingsley, Academy Award-winning actor, has been cast as the voice of Bagheera in the film. It, the movie is being directed by John Favreau uh, with a script by Justin Marks. And final bit of news this week, if you're looking forward to Guardians of the Galaxy, of course, at both Disneyland and Walt Disney World will have an extended sneak peek soon, but that's not the only place you'll be able to see something like that. In fact, 17 minutes of the movie is going to be shown in 150 IMAX locations throughout the United States on July 7th only at 7 p.m. Uh, tickets are completely free and available at seeitfirst.com. I don't know how many are still available. It's been a few days. It might be sold out in some cities, but they are free, and whoever shows up for that gets a really cool vibrant, colorful, uh, exclusive Guardians of the Galaxy poster just for that screening. So that's almost worth going to it just for that. I'm definitely going to go because the poster is awesome and I can't wait to see this movie. And it's only uh, a few weeks later that it's going to come out in theaters. So this is you know less than a month, I think, or roughly a month before the movie comes out. But uh, still pretty exciting. I'm, I'm going to have to head out and check that out. And that will do it for your news from around the world this week. Here's a tip that I am offering up for uh, everybody out there with my own recent experiences. It's easy to go to the theme parks, particularly during the summer, and overwhelm yourself. You're running around, you want to hit all the rides and hit all the shows, and it is important to take a step back sometimes and just realize it's fun to be in the parks. You don't have to be on a moving vehicle to enjoy yourself. Take some time to just walk around and see the sights and relax. When I was at Epcot recently, I walked through the Living Seas for quite a while, or the Seas with Nemo and Friends, whatever you want to call it today, and just kind of hung out in there, watched the, the all the different uh, sea animals, uh, sea creatures swim around. It's very quiet and comfortable and relaxing in there. Uh, you can stroll around the World Showcase at, at sunset time. It's always gorgeous. Uh, they're offering, uh, of course, lots of great food and drinks around there. A recent addition to the uh, outpost, sort of the African area of World Showcase, is a coconut dole whip. That's probably worth checking out. And, uh, you know, it's nice to just sort of take in the ambiance and take in all of uh, the things that are in enjoyable outside of the the buildings or or rides rather and shows you don't have to be uh physically engaged in something to be completely uh enjoying a trip to walt disney world or any of the theme parks for that matter so there's my tip everybody else please email your tips into tips at inside the magic.net Now, it is indeed summer, as I've mentioned a few times, and I'll have a little bit of summer fun coming up here in just a minute. But first, I want to mention Scooter Vacations. For your next Walt Disney World trip, if you or someone that you're with needs help getting around the park, so you can check out the scooters from Scooter Vacations for enhanced mobility. With six models to choose from, you'll find a scooter that meets your needs, including models small enough to fit in a car trunk or specialty luxury models for use on boats or buses or monorails. Scooter Vacations is the only scooter scooter company with 24-hour customer service. So whenever you're listening to the show, you could call them right now. Uh, in fact, contact them now for more information or to make a reservation. Their phone number is 855-WDW-SCOOT. That's 855-WDW-SCOOT. Or you can find them online at scootorlando.com. <laughs> Well, it is indeed summertime, and that means it's hot, it's crowded at the theme parks, and it makes you want to run far, far away to get away to somewhere to just relax, and uh, the water parks are a good place to do that. Beaches are certainly a better place to do that, and there really is nothing prettier in the world of Disney than Aulani. I wish I have been there myself. I have not had a chance to uh, to get out there yet. In fact, I've never even been to Hawaii at all. Someday, I'm sure. Fortunately, I do know some people who have been there that can uh, chime in here with an update of what's going on 
over at Alani. First, I want to welcome Southern California reporter and a friend of mine, uh, Audra Stafford, here to the show to give you an update on all things new and fun over at Disney's Alani Resort in Hawaii. Aloha from beautiful Aulani, a Disney resort and spa here in Koalina, Hawaii. I'm Audra Stafford for Inside the Magic here with the lovely Minnie Mouse. And we're going to show you all the new things that have just been added to this beautiful island paradise. Located on 21 oceanfront acres, just 17 miles from Honolulu International Airport, Aulani has quickly become one of Hawaii's most popular family vacation destinations. Right when you walk into the Maka'ala lobby, uh, you know, you're greeted by one of our wonderful cast members. Then you hear the wonderful music. Uh, Sam, I think you can give us a taste of that music, right? Should I play a little song? I think we should. All right, here we go. It means eyes wide open. So we're really opening everyone's eyes to the beauty of Hawaii and everything that Aulani has to offer. Like the 18,000 square foot Lanivai Spa and Fitness Center, a championship golf course, and a newly expanded pool and deck area. This is our new Kamakalani, so it includes a new infinity edge pool. Uh, we have a Keiki Cove up on that side, so for a little taller, a splash play area. And now our Wailana pool up behind us is an adults only pool. So right through this whole new section, it's something for every member of the family. Families can also enjoy the spacious new villas. The villas offer you a full kitchen, a living room, a separate bedroom. You can have one, two, or three bedroom villas. I think the kitchen in there is bigger than my kitchen at home. <laughs> it's incredible. And you also have the washer and dryer. And you know, I've got two kids, and we know traveling with the kids, just having that additional piece right in your room just makes life a lot easier as you're traveling. Speaking of travel, Aulani also offers a number of excursion opportunities so you can get out and explore popular places around Oahu. There are plenty of fun activities to explore at the resort as well, like stand-up paddleboarding. And thanks to the great instructors and the calm waters, you can be up and safely paddling around within a matter of minutes. You can also rent kayaks, go for a boat ride, or check out Rainbow Reef, the resort's man-made snorkeling lagoon. We also have a lazy river, which is really fun. And, you know, as you're going down the lazy river, you can also kind of spot little menehune. They're little mythical men who are said to create mischief around the resort. So we have 300 of them hidden oh throughout the resort. Along with a few hidden Mickeys. Has anyone found them all that you know of? I don't know. I don't even know where they all are. <laughs> I've tried to go on hunt for all of them and they're just all over the resort. Something else to look for as you wander around Aulani, all of the incredible artwork like this massive mural in the lobby. The resort has one of the world's largest collections of contemporary Hawaiian art. And then of course Disney is known for its entertainment and you have some wonderful entertainment options. We you have do. a version of the luau. Yeah, so our version of the luau it's called Starlet Poo. It's dancing, it's singing, uh, there's even arts and crafts right beforehand. And then at the end, we have our Disney friends, Mickey and Minnie, who come out and they have a little dance party. All of that dancing is sure to have you working up an appetite. Now, if you're looking for some food or some cow cow while you're here at Aulani, there are tons of tasty options. Like the signature Ama Ama restaurant the newly added quick service Ulu Cafe, Aloha. and the Makahiki, which features a very popular character breakfast. Families can go and enjoy breakfast and then also get uh, some interaction with a couple of our characters before setting off on their next magical Hawaiian adventure. From beautiful Koalina, Hawaii, ahui ho, until we meet again. Thanks very much to Audra for offering that update from Alani. You can actually see a video of her full report there, including her conversations with a few Disney representatives that you just heard over on our YouTube channel. And if you want to follow more of her excellent reporting, usually from Southern California events, you can follow her on Twitter at uh, at SD Entertainment. But that's not all from Alani. Taking a little a step further into the experience, I've got Inside the Magic listener Michael, who sent in a report from a recent visit to Alani. Uh, offering some insight as to what it's really like to uh, experience a lot of these recent additions and some of the things that have been there since Alani opened. Michael writes, We ate at the Ama Ama restaurant two times. Overall, the food was good, but very expensive. There weren't that many dining restaurants at the resort, so we kept going to the small shopping center across the street 
as well as a supermarket about three miles away. Most of the other restaurants are fast food or bar food. The only other real food restaurant was a buffet-style makahiki. It didn't seem to be anything special and never enticed us to eat there, especially for the price. But uh, regarding Ama Ama, the one problem we noticed is that uh, they didn't seem to know how to handle romantic dining. They have two sections, one a nicer area and the other more basic tables and chairs with little decor. Our first meal was to celebrate our 20th anniversary. They put us in the plain section, sitting next to three families with small children. It wasn't very romantic. A few days later, we came uh, with our children of 10 and 12, and I told them about the previous issue. They again wanted to put us in the side section, but I, it was insistent, uh, and they moved us to the main area. It wasn't due to a lack of space, and we never did figure out why they kept putting us in the plain section. Overall, the resort was very nice. It was similar to what you'd expect at the big resorts, Fort Wilderness, Animal Kingdom Lodge, Grand Floridian, etc. The slides, pools, and lazy, lazy river were fun, as well as the on-site mini hula show. We went elsewhere for the beach, as it was a bit too sanitized, Disney-fied. Uh, with the cove, there were no waves, and people had to wear life vests. We spent almost uh, most every day on the North Shore instead, about a 45-minute drive. Speaking of which, by the way, if you want to get off the resort, that was one drawback. The North Shore was 45 minutes away. Honolulu was 45 to 60 minutes away on good traffic days. For people who want to stay on the resort the entire time, it's fine. But we ran out of things to do pretty quickly. Imagine staying only at a Disney resort in Florida. No parks, no downtown Disney, no boardwalk, no visiting other resorts. We're an active family, so we would have gone stir-crazy after two or three days. Uh, Michael, thanks very much for your additional insight about Alani. As I said, I have not been there, but a lot of great tips there as far as what to expect with things to do around. I mean, I guess there is only so much time you could spend going around the same lazy river or hunting for the minihune around the, the resort or, you know, doing a few character meet and greets after a while. You're thinking, okay, yeah, I gotta go do something. At least that's how I would feel. I, I'm sure a lot of people would be perfectly happy just lounging around the same pool day after day for the rest of eternity, but for active people, people who want to see things and do things like me, uh, I, I think I would be in the same boat, and I would want to go explore those other areas, uh, even if it's 45 minutes to an hour away, I would be happy to do that. I mean, how often do you get to Hawaii? Certainly not that uh, frequently. Uh, so I look forward to getting there someday. Uh, it's good to hear some insight as to what to do, what not to do, and uh, everything that's going on over there. I, I do uh, not know a what Disney's plans for the future of Alani are, how much more they're going to add and expand to it. It'll be certainly interesting to see that and follow that. I'm sure I'll get out there someday, eventually, but I think I've got, uh, you know, Paris and Tokyo and that sort of thing on the list uh, a lot higher than Alani at this point, as beautiful and wonderful as it sounds. So there's a little bit of uh, summertime for you uh, from outside of the usual Disney locations. Now, of course, coming up very soon is July 4th, and all the th major theme parks plan their July 4th festivities, usually surrounding a massive, epic fireworks show at the end of the day. But what else do you do, do on July 4th? Well, it's usually hamburgers, hot dogs, grilling, cookout, that sort of thing. And uh, this year, uh, there is a new hot dog place opening up in Orlando, uh, but it is not at Disney. It's over at Universal Orlando called Hot Dog Hall of Fame. It's opening very, very soon at Universal Orlando. City Walk, and the name of the guy behind this creation should be familiar to all Disney fans. His name is Steven Shussler, and he is the man behind Rainforest Cafe and the T-Rex restaurant at Downtown Disney out here at Walt Disney World. Well, now he has uh, taken his attention over to Universal Orlando for his latest restaurant creation, Hot Dog Hall of Fame. I had a chance to talk with him recently about that jump from Disney over to Universal and what Hot Dog Hall of Fame will bring to Universal Orlando that was not there before. So here's a quick chat with restaurateur Stephen Schussler. I am the commissioner of Hot Dog Hall of Fame. Excellent. Great title. Thank you. So uh, I think a lot of people are familiar with you from Rainforest Cafe, T-Rex, obviously over at Disney. Now we're at Universal. Uh, how'd you make that jump? Well, you know, it, it, Florida is the home of some of the most authentic uh, entertainment arenas in the world. And uh, Universal is a, a, a big part of what brings people to Florida. 
and we're very excited to be part of Universal Studios' uh, expansion plans about their food plans. It's a great day here at Universal Studios. They're doing a fantastic job, and uh, we're proud to be part of it. Definitely. Well, City Walk is definitely getting a whole new life here, and uh, Hot Dog Hall of Fame, is this the first ever of these? Well, we had one that we used in operation as a test market in a casino in Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania, uh, prior to this to see how it went over. And uh, it was very, very successful. And uh, when Universal called and said, hey, we want to do something with hot dogs, we said, we're ready. Well, you know, it's good to have something that's a little bit more uh, quick service, but still good food. Right. How, how do you make sort of that promise? What makes your hot dogs great hot dogs? Well, first of all, they taste great. Uh, they've been tested by thousands and thousands of people. We've had taste testings. And to put the right dog with the right bun and then have your choice of mustards and condiments is something that you really can't find anywhere else. Twelve different kinds of mustard. I'm a guy that doesn't necessarily like yellow mustard. I like a brown mustard or mustard with a seed in it. Everyone's got their own particular uh, brand. But we wanted to make sure we gave people here at Universal Studios a choice so that they can make a decision what they wanted to put. But the best hot dog is a hot dog when you bite into it, it bites back. It's got to have a great casing, and all these hot dogs have great casings. Well, I just tasted quite a few of them, lots of deliciousness to be found, well, uh, but I noticed a, a complete lack of ketchup on any of them. A complete lack of ketchup. <laughs> never, never, ever, ever, never put ketchup on your hot dog. I will keep that in mind. Now, when you introduced the... Uh, paint your own wiener. Yes. I definitely heard some giggles from yes. the crowd. Is that to be expected? It's to be expected. It's it's part of the fun. It's part of being a, being a, an all-American uh, fast serve, fast food uh, uh, place. And, you know, look at the seating. Uh, we, we've got uh, uh, baseball seats over there. I mean, I've got the Jumbotron up on top where we're going to be showing movies of people eating hot dogs. What more fun than, than having movies at Coney Island and sure. the other historic places all over the United States that served hot dogs? You're not going to find it. So it's real exciting that we're bringing it here to Universal. And when can everybody expect to enjoy their first hot dogs In here? In a couple of weeks, we'll be open. Very, very soon for uh, Hot Dog Hall of Fame over at Universal Orlando City Walk. And yes, you did in hear me say, uh, did hear me say, paint your own wiener. Uh, of course, uh, I'm talking about a little box that you could buy with some arts and crafts kind of supplies with a wiener dog in there. Uh, a, a little ceramic or plastic, I'm not even vinyl maybe. I'm not even sure what it is, but you can customize it to uh, your desire. A fun little merchandise addition to this uh, quick service eatery, as I mentioned there. Uh, I did try quite a few of the different hot dogs that they will be uh, serving there. There are about nine different hot dogs, I think, uh, along with all those different kinds of mustard that he mentioned. It's around $7 for a basket of a hot dog and some chips. A little pricey maybe for a hot dog, but it is more than just a hot dog. They have all the toppings that you would expect on some of the you know bizarre flavors of hot dogs. Uh, they have uh, the Sonoran, which is a Vienna all-beef hot dog with smoked bacon, pinto beans, grilled onions, peppers, and cheese. That was definitely one of my favorites really good there uh the rocky has uh grilled uh, peppers and onions and sauerkraut another one that I, I particularly enjoyed i think my favorite of the bunch was the kansas city which has a pulled pork coleslaw pickles and barbecue sauce the pickle was fantastic there's a coney dog a boston dog and uh, quite a few others so lots of options there and and point being you can just kind of swing through there real easily and uh and grab a quick bite that's going to be decent at a decent price and um uh, a nice compliment to all of the other uh, more elaborate new restaurants that Universal is rolling out. It's great to see that uh, City Walk is becoming somewhere that you can really find some great food at some reasonable prices and uh, places to hang out and enjoy. I'm really looking forward to that and the many other restaurants that uh, have opened and will be opening soon over there at Universal Orlando. Hi, Ricky. Hi, Ricky. Hey, Ricky. Hi, Ricky. Hi, Ricky. Hey, Ricky. Ricky, this is amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Inside the Magic Listener Feedback. (laughs) 
going to spend the rest of this week's show catching up on listener feedback, beginning with an email from Big N, who writes, Your most recent episode, 481 and three quarters, was uh, one of the first episodes I listened all the way to the end and wanted more. Uh, your guest, uh, uh, you did very well with your guest through the entire thing. Tell him a great job, you as well. Uh, keep it up, Ricky. America loves you. Uh, well, Big N, thanks very much for the compliments. I'm glad you enjoyed uh, the discussion about Diagon Alley, particularly with uh, Andrew Sims appearance here on the show. We'll have to get him back sometime to uh, discuss things Harry Potter again sometime in the future. Along the same lines, Mark from Fresno, California writes in and says, uh, ITM show 481 was wizardingly wonderful. Well, I guess you threw in the and three quarters bit because of platform nine and three quarters in the Harry Potter series. I was listening to the show and uh, taking a bath last Sunday and was completely uh, impressed at what the Wizarding World of Harry Potter Universal has to offer. I know uh, you said that the podcast on Harry Potter contains spoilers, but to be honest, I've never been to Florida before and some of my family has been there, though. So just for enjoyment, I listened all the way through without interruption or skipping anything and I We'll try to find the time to uh, check out all the Harry Potter clips on the ITM YouTube channel. Uh, as for uh, Harry Potter books and movies, I only got as far as Goblet of Fire and haven't read or uh, watched any further in the series. I don't know how different Harry Potter's Wizarding World in uh, Hollywood is comparison to the one in Florida. Maybe you can do a little comparison slash contrast thing on your show sometime. Uh, Mark, that is a great idea. Of course, we're still a couple of years out from uh, when Hollywood's version of everything will open. From what I know of what they're building out there, Hogwarts Castle will certainly be part of it. Uh, Hogsmeade Village will be there. It's going to be very similar to the original Wizarding World, not so much the Diagon Alley portion of things. However, they have said that they're going to make some tweaks and adjustments and changes. I have a feeling the interactive wands will be part of that experience. I don't see why they wouldn't be. And uh, sort of, uh, you know, just sort of taking what they learned, what they know from the original uh, part of the park uh, out here in Florida and just making it that much better for Hollywood. And then, of course, the uh, uh, version overseas is going to be opening just a couple of weeks from now as well. And I'm sure they'll learn plenty of that uh, from that that they will apply in addition. So lots more uh, Potter to uh, look forward to. Certainly the most exciting thing that's happening in the theme park landscape nowadays. Speaking of overseas, Derek writes in and says, I'm currently in Japan on my honeymoon. My wife and I will be going to Tokyo Disneyland and Tokyo Disney Sea in a few days to end our trip. My question has to do with Universal Orlando. Uh, I have celiac disease, a severe gluten allergy, and I've been to Walt Disney World many times and have had great experiences eating there and almost always talking to a chef at a sit-down restaurant or a manager at counter service. My question is, how does Universal uh, handle food allergies at their restaurants? Are they as professional and as thorough as Disney? Will a chef come talk to me? I ask because I was thinking about a trip there in October for Halloween Horror Nights, uh, as you made it sound so good last year. Well, Derek, uh, you will have a blast, certainly. It is a lot of fun. Um, As far as the uh, food allergies and everything, yes, they will certainly work with you. However, um, you know, this this actually came up recently. Somebody had asked uh, during an interview with uh, the chef over there uh, as far as Harry Potter food specifically, and uh, his response was good in that they will absolutely do what they can to make sure that uh, you know you won't have any uh, reactions to anything, that the food is prepared as you need it to be. However, the menu itself is not necessarily designed with that in mind. They may have to fish beyond the usual menu. You might not actually be able to eat anything on their set menu for any specific thing. They may have uh, sort of reach out to their special gluten-free menu or their special allergy menu and bring in some food from there that might not be quite what you were hoping to to get sort of a you know a spin on the uh, the food that is on the menu. So yes, they they will be accommodating, but don't expect the the same food that is on the menu wherever you go. It could be something completely different. Next email comes in from Michael, who writes, I just wanted to say thank you for doing what you do. It brings a needed sense of magic to my day, listening to your podcast, watching the videos, etc. And I think uh, I think so many others relate to your passion. And speaking for myself, I'm very grateful that you share your experiences. I really loved the interview with the park designers in show 478. I also wanted to ask, even though this is international stuff, uh, have you heard about Dubai Land or something like that? I've heard that there are plans for a theme park that will be huge, as big as a city, and will feature life-size replicas of many man-made structures from around the world, like the Eiffel Tower and Leaning Tower of Pisa. I just want to know if you heard anything like that. Uh, Michael, that would not surprise me. I I haven't followed Dubai really specifically recently, but uh, they, in the past, have been all about building the biggest of the biggest of the best of the hugest of the everything, most, uh, you know, indoor uh, 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 ski resort and and crazy, you know, in the middle of the desert and crazy things like that. Um, So, no, I I don't know anything specific about what you're asking, but uh, it is certainly... 
interesting to watch what they're able to, you know, I mean, they've got obviously lots of money flowing over there. Uh, and so um, I know some projects haven't quite come to fruition after they've announced them, you know, maybe a little too crazy, a little too out there, but uh, it is fun to watch and see what they do manage to construct in that area of the world. Next email is from a different Michael who writes, longtime listener uh, from Alabama. I wanted to know, uh, I don't know if this is something that you'd want to answer the podcast or not, but I was wondering with as frequently as you visit the parks and as much walking as you do, what kind of shoes or footwear do you wear uh, to prevent from getting blisters? Now, I, n- I normally go to the parks one or two times a year and I try to get uh, in as much as possible, which means a lot of walking and I always end up with massive blisters on my feet. Uh, Michael, no, this is a really great question, actually. I remember... Uh, Many years ago, I went to Disneyland. Uh, it, it, I don't know if it was my first trip or second trip to Disneyland, but at the end of a particularly long and grueling day, I was hobbling back to the hotel. I think we were staying at the uh, Holiday Inn um, uh, down Harbor Boulevard, and to get back was absolute torture. Every step that I took was just, I was, I was writhing in pain because my feet hurt so bad, and I knew after that I had to find a solution to this problem as well. Um, it, I you know, hunted around for insoles and jelly inserts and all that kind of stuff, and eventually at some point over the last few years, I actually had an Inside the Magic listener write to me who worked for, I think it was, uh, I don't know if they worked directly for New Balance or just a shoe company that worked with that, or maybe it was Reebok, or I don't, I don't know where all the companies work together, but somehow I ended up with some New Balance shoes in my hands uh, as, as a uh, great uh, possibility for wearing in the parks, and boy, did that change things. I've been wearing New Balance ever since, not to turn this into a giant advertisement or anything. I'm not getting paid or endorsed or sponsored or anything for this, but um, yeah, it's been great i've gone through quite a few new balance shoes over the last few years and i always go back to them because they leave my feet feeling wonderful uh at the end of long long days standing walking running jumping i don't know whatever i do in the parks uh not a lot of running really but uh yeah they they're great so that would be my recommendation um Obviously, picking the right size and width, and like I have particularly wide feet, so that's good. Uh, New Balance offers a, the wide size for me. Uh, your mileage may vary, but that is definitely my recommendation for shoes in the park. Oliver writes in and says, uh, with the new Ratatouille opening in Paris, another Disney attraction has utilized the trackless ride system. Sadly, the United States parks still don't have this, unless you count the small part in Florida's Tower of Terror. Uh, Why is that? Uh, Do you think it is purely a cost issue? I've gone to both Pooh's Honey Hunt in Tokyo and Mystic Manor in Hong Kong, and both rides are phenomenal in the the quality of the set pieces and the utilization of the ride system. It's a shame park goers in the U.S. don't get to experience it. Disney certainly could use it to compete with the Universal and Harry Potter. Uh, Oliver, great question. I don't know why it hasn't been implemented more in the United States. Uh, I, you know, within the last I don't know year or two or whenever uh, Antarctica opened over at SeaWorld, I had a chance to to ride that a few times. That is a trackless ride system that is you know just like Mystic Manor or Honey Hunt or the new Ratatouille, and it's certainly the first one in this area to uh, employ that type of technology. I can't say that Antarctica necessarily used it to its fullest potential, um, but it was it was certainly interesting to be able to kind of roam freely on a ride vehicle not knowing where you were going to go next because there was no track ahead. Uh, So you really didn't know if you were going to spin one way or turn the next way or just kind of go in circles or what exactly would uh, be going on. So yeah, a very interesting uh, sort of uh, different take on the way a ride comes off and why hasn't Disney implemented this? I I do not know. I think they're still little by little figuring out what to do with this technology. As you said, it's, it's in Tokyo, it's in Hong Kong, now it's in Paris. I have to imagine the United States will be on the list. Maybe we'll see a trackless Star Wars ride or something down the line. Maybe it'll be a frozen ride and you're sliding on the ice tracklessly. Who knows? Uh, but I, I have to imagine it's it's going to come at some point, just not now. Next email comes in from Sarah who writes, I'm a new listener and love it. Do you know if there is a good Walt Disney World transportation wizard app out there? I used to use Twiz, uh, I think it was, until my latest trip uh, this May, but it led us on an almighty wild goose chase. <laughs> Any ideas? Uh, and wouldn't it be great if Disney added something like this onto their app? Uh, Sarah, you know, I don't know of anything offhand. Uh, Disney, uh, Walt Disney World Transportation definitely can be confusing. You know, which bus and the monorail over here and what's the best way to walk even. Uh, you know, which which has a boat and, and all of that sort of thing. 
And, uh, you know, there are sort of the, the, tr- the tips and tricks that locals can offer or frequent visitors can offer can know, you know, when you are within walking distance of things or uh, all of that. But I, I don't know that there is a particular app that summarizes all of that in one place. Sounds like something waiting to be made. But I definitely agree that should be part of the My Disney Experience uh, app uh, to be able to give guests uh, the different options to get from place to place with the quickest time possible and, and all of that. Um, so I unfortunately don't have anything <laughs> to offer there other than good idea. Next email comes in from Jay, who writes, I've been listening to your podcast for nearly five years now, and it's the only thing that keeps me up to speed with all the cool updates and goings on, goings on, goings on in the parks in the uh, general Orlando area. I absolutely love listening to the show every Monday. Keep up the awesome job. My family and I are returning to Orlando for our third visit in October this year, and we're looking forward to being able to plan our trip in advance using My Magic Plus uh, and also the addition of free Wi Fi in the Disney parks to navigate around and change our plans if we require. We know that Universal Orlando now offers free. Free Wi-Fi within the parks, and they have an iPhone app with the wait times and maps and all that cool stuff. My question is, do you know when they plan to make an app available to the UK iTunes Store? It is currently nowhere to be found. Or would I need to and be able to download the app upon my arrival to the US? It would be a shame to miss out on the great tool for use in the parks. Uh, Jay, really good question. You know, I notice this whenever new apps pop up, regardless of whether it's theme parks or just things in general. That there's, and it's not even just apps. It's sometimes it's it's uh, Disney websites or, or uh, you know movie rights restrictions and things like that. It doesn't always apply internationally. A lot of things are U.S. only, and they don't always make that very clear up front. Uh, so I, I honestly, uh, not to sound like a broken record here after that last email, but I don't know the answer to your question either. Um, I would think that when you come into the U.S., if you're able to connect to the United States you know, uh, iTunes store, you should be able to download the app and use it then. I know there are ways of sort of, not really hacking, but getting around the restrictions of which country you're in and iTunes and all of that. I've downloaded something from iTunes Japan before. Um, if you just sort of, uh, you know, if you Google sort of ways around that sort of thing, you can find they're, they're not official, unofficial sort of ways. There's, you know, it's not it's not like you're doing anything wrong. It's just ways around those restrictions uh, to be able to download things that you might otherwise not be able to as a result of where you are located. So you might be able to find a way to do that if you can connect to the U.S. iTunes store somehow. But uh, certainly once you get it within the U.S., I would I would think, I would hope that would be a, uh, a possibility. And then you can use the app to, uh, to be useful because it is. Next email is from Keith from Massachusetts, who writes, Saw Maleficent last night, and I'm with you. I, it was not the movie uh, I was expecting at all. Angelina Jolie was very good as the title character and a great choice, but I think if they went with the pure evil route rather than the scorned lover, then she'd really shine. To me, they tried making the whole story richer and more complex than it needed to be and added too many weird elements to the tale. If they stuck to something closer to the traditional story, uh, it, I think it would have been a better film. I know that if it was the same thing we saw in Sleeping Beauty, then there'd be no point in making it and I'm all for creative freedom but it was just way too different I know trolls and having a crow that turns into a human aren't exactly outside of the realm of possibility in fairy tales but last time I checked Maleficent didn't command an army of Groots <laughs> so uh, Keith yes great way to put it there and you're right uh, I, I agree with everything that you just wrote about uh, Maleficent there are those who can see it for what it is and appreciate it and I think uh, if Maleficent wasn't Maleficent if it was just another movie it would, would have been uh, come off a lot better uh, but it was expectations that kind of ruined it for a lot of people, myself included, because the character that is portrayed by Angelina Jolie is barely Maleficent. It's just some other semi kind of sort of evil, not really character. Next email is from Brian, who writes, I've been listening to the show for the last six months or so. I wanted to say great job with Inside the Magic. It's been both entertaining and informative to hear what's going on with Disney Universal, etc., week to week. I received a letter from Disney the other night regarding a stay uh, upcoming in November. I'm going to be staying at the All-Star Music Resort, and I'm excited about the free meal plan. However, the late, uh, letter stated that they uh, their food court will be under refurbishment during our stay. They did have a plan B ready for us, though. The arcade will temporarily serve a small menu 
menu of sandwiches, etc., and the shuttles will be available to head over to the other all-star resorts. My question, though, is about the complimentary mug given to each guest with the dining plan. I've yet to use one of these since they switched over to the new filling system. Will these mugs work at the other hotels if we uh, go have a meal there, or are they only good at your home resort? Do you think the beverage machines will still be open even during the refurbishment? Well, uh, a very uh, specific questions there, Brian. I do not know if the beverage machines will be open during the refurbishment. I would think not. They'll probably close the whole food court area off in order to do whatever they're going to be doing. However, you should be able to use those mugs throughout the All-Star Resort and any of the others. I mean, if they're sending you there, if they have a shuttle there, I'm sure the system will allow you to go use that rapid fill system, which I despise. I think it's silly that Disney is uh, condemning uh, everybody for the uh, uh, actions of a select few people who decided to you know, bring buckets and fill up their uh, massive containers with uh, soda, but not everybody did that. I mean, most people just got a soda, and you would enjoy it, and that would be it. Um, now you have to sort of go with this timed, this limited refill thing. You know, you go there, and oh, you have two hours to do exactly three refills, and oh, it's two hours and one minute. Sorry, you don't get your soda anymore, and you know, that's, it's just obnoxious. So I don't like the whole rapid fill thing, but it's here, and it's the high-tech drink, and so uh, it... it, it is, you know, it's new and it's not going away and you'll have to deal with it. So I, I do think that they'll be accommodating about it. I wouldn't think they would, you know, give you this mug and then you wouldn't be able to use it. That wouldn't make any sense. Next email is from Amanda, who writes, Love the podcast. Listen to it every week. I went to Walt Disney World last year and, and thought I was going to have trouble finding food to eat that was gluten-free. I'm uh, allergic to wheat, so I uh, usually always have to pack a lunch wherever I go. When I got there, I was shocked that Disney had gluten-free food and that I could find it in almost every restaurant. Every time you order a gluten-free item, you meet with a head chef. It was so nice and honestly the best place to get gluten-free food. Amanda, great to hear that. This ties in with uh, what I just read a few minutes ago, that Disney certainly goes uh, above and beyond and out of their way to make sure that everybody's dietary uh, restrictions and uh, needs are met, and it's always good to hear confirmation of that. Next email is from Margarita, who writes, Love your show. I download the podcast and listen to it on my way to work. Great to hear Disney and theme park news at the start of my day before teaching high school students. My question is about Magic Bands. I go to Disney at least once a year, and since Magic Bands have been around, I have two already. This year, I will be going twice, so as I was told by a Disney Guest Relations, every time I go, I will be getting a new Magic Band, so that makes four Magic Bands with all the technology they have come up with for these RFID bands. You would think guests could just use one band over and over what do you think about this uh yeah yeah i do think that is sort of a, a weirdness about the uh new system if you're you know an annual pass holder you get your one band and you use that for as long as you're that pass holder and and you don't even have to use it you can use your park ticket if you wanted to because those have rfid chips and but it has sort of become the default uh when you book a new disney vacation a walt disney world vacation you get magic bands for your family if you're staying at the hotels it's just kind of happens uh, i think somewhere in the registration process they should be able to realize oh look, you were here two months ago, and we already sent you Magic Bands. Would you like us to link up your reservation to your existing ones? Of course, I can see the problems with that. Uh, people might lose them, leave them somewhere, or just want to collect them and have it be part of the experience every time. Hey, we're going on a new trip. Here's our new Magic Bands to mark that moment, and you could get different names on it or you know, put whatever you want on it. So I could see where, where guests would want more, um, but yes, it would be handy to sort of just have the one that you use. It should just be an option. You should Do you want new Magic Bands, or do you want to keep your existing ones? and link up to that. That would be certainly handy. Next email is from Luke, who writes, I mean, my family have made many trips to Walt Disney World for as long as I can remember. Most times we've been down there uh, is during the spring or the fall. This year, my mom is planning on going down during uh, the middle of December. She's heard all about the amazing Christmas decorations that they put up there during that time of the year and wants to go see them. We live all the way up here in the northern part of Indiana and would like to know ahead of time what the temperature is like in Orlando during December. Do we need long pants? Do we need long sleeve shirts for when the sun goes down? Stuff like that. Uh, I've listened to your podcast on, on YouTube for about three years now. Seeing as you know more about Walt Disney World than I do, I figured you'd be able to give us some tips. Well, I certainly can. Luke, though I am not a weatherman, I cannot predict exactly what the temperatures will be like. December is really unpredictable, particularly. I mean, I could tell you from now to eternity that summertime is hot, extremely hot. That's easy to say. December, however, we've had Decembers that are hot, that feel like summer, where you're sweating during the day, and at night you finally get some relief from the sun and it's comfortable. But we've also 
also had December's where uh, it is it is lovely during the day, and then at night you are freezing. Uh, probably not freezing like you're used to uh, where you're from, but freezing as far as Floridians go. Um, so my recommendation to you would be to check the weather a few days before you leave and pack accordingly for there. It is entirely possible and likely that you'll need long sleeve shirts, sweaters, long pants, etc. Uh, certainly at night, probably maybe even possibly during the day. Uh, but I cannot say that for sure, considering we are in the hottest part of the year right now. Um, so I would just you know start checking and seeing what this year's uh, winter weather will be like in Florida, and uh, and and make your your judgment call from there. Let's do one more email before we're wrapping this up. Comes in from John, who writes, "It is amazing how you can uh, co- uh, how much you cover in the world of Disney and themed entertainment. I can tell you that you love what you do. You must be exhausted. <laughs> I am planning a trip to the Magic Kingdom for my family in August and want to make Fast Pass Plus reservations thirty days in advance for seventeen people total. I want to give everyone the same itinerary. Is it difficult to make Fast Pass Plus reservations for seventeen people all at once? Is it best to link everyone to one account or spread them out over several accounts? What is the best way to make reservations for large?" numbers of people a great question john i haven't had this one asked before and yes i am always exhausted i I don't sleep much Uh, although i've managed to catch up over the last few days finally it's kind of this weird lull between things right now anyway uh i would say the best way to do that right now as the system stands would be to make all the reservations from one account and then uh well you can link the accounts as you said either before or after but once you've linked all the accounts together you can go through and copy your reservations to those others it would be really silly to go through every single account individually and make the same reservations over and over and over. So I would link all the accounts first, and then as one person, you can either say, as you're making them, you can actually select I want a reservation for me and 16 other people, and you can check everybody all at once. Uh, That might be a little difficult because there might not be 16, 17 uh, reservations all for the same thing at the same time, especially the more popular things, so you might actually have better luck selecting them in smaller groups. Um, But if you, you could certainly try it, you know, link everything together, go through and click everybody say i want to pick for all of these people and then pick your way through and then if you run into some difficulties along the way where things aren't available then kind of break it down into smaller groups or just do one person and then copy it over to the individual people because that is is an option as well so there's a few different ways to approach um that uh but i would definitely say link them all up front and and try it that way to begin with and that'll do it for listener feedback this week And that wraps up show 482 of Inside the Magic, a catch-up week after all of last week's Harry Potter fun. Of course, more Harry Potter fun coming up in the near future as soft openings are hopefully coming soon. Can't wait to get back into Diagon Alley as well as the official opening on July 8th. And then after that, it just turns into absolute crazy summer madness and everybody trying to get in there. And I imagine I will steer clear of that for quite a while. I don't want to be there with tens of thousands of people all trying to get into the same place. Uh, though it should be, should be fun to see on July 8th. Uh, In the meantime, of course, uh, next week, as I mentioned here on the show, will be the Half Ear in Review with Paul Berry from A Window to the Magic, where we discuss all things uh, Disney and theme parks for the last six months. I'm sure it will be a wonderfully entertaining and completely silly (laughs) show, as it always is. Then, the week after that, uh, well, actually, next weekend, will be uh, sort of the debut of all this Frozen entertainment uh, being coming to Disney's Hollywood Studios. So, if you want to see that right away follow uh follow inside the magic on twitter on facebook and definitely on youtube lots of videos to come and uh, on the website and then i'll be back uh the week after that for uh a recap of that and whatever else is going on over the next couple of weeks uh, uh on the next podcast so lots to look forward to in the summer and then after all of that i think i'll stay clear of the parks for a little while because hot crowded summer is not the happiest place in the parks. I'm sure I'll find plenty of other fun things to do, like fly out to California for San Diego Comic Con, and then a couple weeks later, back out to California for the Scare LA convention and some other fun, and uh, who knows what else. It, you know, a lot of fun always to be had in the world of themed entertainment. I do want to thank Magical Travel for sponsoring this week's episode of Inside the Magic. You can find out more about their services by visiting MagicalTravel.com and also, if you need help getting around Walt Disney World, you're going to want to check out Scooter Vacations for for enhanced mobility, you can uh, find them online at scootorlando.com. 
And of course, between episodes of this show, please do visit our website at InsideTheMagic.net. It is your source for Disney and theme park news with uh, all of our podcast videos, photos, articles. Find us on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, all that fun stuff. So thanks to all of you for listening each and every week. And have a magical week. Bye. There's a great, big, beautiful tomorrow. Just a dream away.